Right, right. Welcome to the HR Perspective Talk Show. It is uh, Thursday, July 12, 2018. My name is David, a.k.a. Kimba, a.k.a. Christian Long, Sam Biggie Soup. Biggie Soup is on special assignment. He should be back here very shortly. Um, just want to say that this is the HR Perspective Talk Show, uh, coming to you live from St. Croix, Virgin Islands. Uh, we do have a telephone number, 340-201-9005. Uh, link us up on Facebook. On our Facebook page, It's Your Perspective Talk Show. Go to that page right there and uh, check out the stream. Uh, I've also shared it around to my personal page, which is David Christian, and a couple other uh, Facebook pages that I deal with in particular. Um, real quick, uh, I want to give a shout-out to our sponsors, Maggie's Party Decor, Supersonic Computer Services. Uh, quick shout-out also to CHS Class of 1982. Big up to that crowd right there. Uh, all our recorded live shows are on our YouTube channel. Check us out there. Uh, we're pushing... Uh, I don't know, maybe five to 600 shows now. Uh, we've just been kind of rolling right along. But we do have a special guest in the studio tonight. Her name is Sherry Ann Francis. She is running for Senator at Large out of St. Croix, out of St. John, Virgin Islands. Uh, let me put her up there on the screen. Wave to the crowd, wave to the crowd. There she is right there. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You doing fine? <laughs> okay. Um, so you're running for office. Uh -huh. And um, this is your first time? Yes, this is my first time running for office okay. or anything, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. You, are you excited? Yes, it's exciting. Um, it's, it's different. It's uh, be, from leaving, from being a, a private citizen to a public citizen is, is it's an interesting transition, you know. Okay. So it's, it's fun. So when you say that, you mean that people are just sort of more paying attention to your, 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 your sort of your public and your private life, basically? Yes. It, okay. And more people will recognize me that, you know, usually when you um, m meet someone or see someone and they come to you, like, you know, them at some period of time but uh -huh. like now it's people that you've never seen before and are coming up yeah. and talking to you okay so okay good. so like what, what, what are they saying to you the people that come to you that since you've been running what are they saying to you what, what is what are their concerns now well one of the main things that they want to know is what am i planning to do for the territory and uh, they come up with a lot of concerns they have uh, some of the major things is grs for some okay um how we are going to help with the economy, roads, okay. all, all different aspects with government. And, you know, one of the big questions they ask is, why are you running? Okay. You know? so, so, so why are you running? What, what was the, uh, the day and the time and the second that the light bulb went off and said, you know, you know, I like to call it like, God, you know, God inspires you to do something. And so hopefully that's what kind of what happened. But where were you at? Well, uh, I've always been interested in politics and the way the government works and stuff so from when I was in high school I even took an extra course American government yes and I study political science so with that I've always been interested in but I always thought I would be in the background okay as opposed to in front yes doing you know the actual shaking of hands and okay. stuff. so so I always thought I would be in the background but after the storms um, especially after the storms, I saw when I was helping with the distribution center and different aspects of the recovery, mm. I saw that it was a need in leadership. So I decided to, I said, you know, instead of just being a person who would wait for that per that perfect that person to step up, mm. why don't you do it? Because you know you have the knowledge and you have the the mindset that you want to help the people. So okay. that's why I. It was around after the recovery effort. That's okay. when I really felt decided. that you could could really help by running. Yes. Um, so, what is your platform? I mean, what what you know you know the thing here I see in your flyer, your brochure here, mm -hmm. uh, you talk about uh, the three uh, the three E platform. Mm -hmm. um, so let, let's talk about the three E's: economy, education, enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us, just tell us here, you know, you, you talk about the economy, uh, economic diversification. Yes. Just kind of run down, uh, you know, what, what that means to you. Well, economic diversification, that in order for us to, okay, even after the funds run out, mm -hmm. we need to have something other than tourism as our main industry. Okay. Especially after the storm, you saw that, you know, with us being down, we, and the, our tourists, dollars stop coming what are we going to do what what 
other aspects we can't just continue to rely on just tourism okay because like anything could happen like cuba could open yes. tomorrow and you know change the whole dynamics of our our industry right now so i was with my belief is one of the aspects i want to work look into is bringing another industry and really strengthening it okay such as agriculture okay and with that i looked at hawaii as one of the one of the places that i thought well, had a good example they also incorporated their agricultural industry into their tourist industry okay so when you have a concerted plan for your for your agricultural industry it could really benefit you including manufacturing of locally grown um, products okay and i look at aruba aloe mm -hmm. uh, aruba aloe is a skincare product made out of aloe from aruba okay and i said like we have the the land especially st croix yes. has a land to to really uh, grow our agricultural industry and to utilize that to build upon i okay. think we're we're steadfast for that okay mm -hmm. okay um moving on here you talk about <coughs> excuse me um uh i guess uh this i guess the streamline update of version of call to encourage small business growth is that is that one of the things that i guess some people have sort of been talking with you about yes and one of the aspects i looked at was um puerto rico they had to ask where they gave tax incentives to young entrepreneurs mm. and that way you know a lot our we have an aging population uh, a lot of our young people are leaving the territory and they don't feel like they have the opportunities here mm. and to encourage them i believe we should have tax benefits for them to start their businesses at least for the first couple of years okay you know with that you you encourage them to come open their business you know especially the fir first few years are the most rockiest period for them to yeah. get started and that way we also bring back our young people give them an opportunity not just in government mm -hmm. but to start their own be their own boss yes and i thought that was um uh that's go going to be important for us to move on to the future okay so so making sure that we stimulate small business growth i mean mm -hmm. you know just kind of get that going yeah, a lot of people feel that small business is sort of what sort of makes the economy grow and um nationally and here yes. that's that's if you focus it's nice to have the big companies come in mm. but if you have a strong small business community mm. like it that way that produces jobs also it yes. produces revenue and it also gives us a level of of autonomy okay okay mm -hmm. Um, and so you say here, support legislation for expansion of agriculture industry to include, uh, you talked about the manufacture of locally uh, grown products. Mm -hmm. So you're all for agriculture. You said aloe vera in particular. Um, well, not for here. I know they, uh, it works for Aruba, but I wanted to use that as an example of someone concentrating on a crop. Okay. And then trying to build upon it and you know include manufacturing goods from that crop Pro okay I yeah so you. that's the okay the is that is that um uh i mean is that something that you feel is doable uh in like in the first your first two years if you were to get in well even if it's we at least need to start putting it forward okay. you know you know, working the senate is a lot of hard work yes. and we need to have people who are willing to do the hard work and trying to make the steps to build it for the future okay like you know if if you put the steps in and do the research and everything i believe everything is doable okay if not now but at least start doing the start steps the process to, yeah okay okay Necessary. so you, you mentioned too that you, you, your, your background is political science mm -hmm. and so you, you talk a lot of, i guess you studied about governments and government structure and, and this kind of thing right yes and so I, I guess what you were taught is sort of what is taught i guess in most college level type schools right mm -hmm. so how, how does that you, you know would how did, does that does that sort of match up or, or line up with the way our government is here well you with with political science you, you it's the study of how government works and and a lot of the times we tend to just look in our territory alone mm -hmm. and one of the things you have to learn is like they have 
if you look outside in the national national wise that's why i give examples of hawaii or puerto mm-hmm. rico or different places okay. because when you you don't have to reinvent the wheel okay if you study what works in some place and take it and bring it here mm-hmm. that's going to benefit us yes and so the study of political science helps you understand what's taking place other places and mm-hmm. and try to use those um, principles here for okay. example we get um, some knowledge in economics all different aspects of government okay so. okay mm-hmm. okay um so let's talk a little bit to uh, one of the things here I, I see here that you have is grs we all know the grs is just uh falling apart um, mm-hmm. some say it's going to fall apart real soon and then i guess the economy here may may just fall apart altogether um I mean, wh- what's your take on what's going on i mean can you offer any constructive um I don't know. I don't want to say mm-hmm. criticism, but just, just I mean, you know, as a, as a, you know, you're not retired, but mm-hmm. I'm sure you have conversations amongst yourself in a sort of a non-political context with your friends, your family. I mean, how how would you envision fixing the GRS system here? One of the big aspects I believe that we all should work on, especially all the different aspects with GRS, is working together to come up with a plan. Mm-hmm. Because that's why I say. We have to get all of the stakeholders in place, mm-hmm. not just um, the the board and the GERs and administrator, but also the govern ex- executive branch, the mm-hmm. legislative branch, and come and really hash out some uh, solutions to the issues. Because they said it's supposed to be insolvent in 2023, and that was before the storms and yes. stuff. So we, it it's could a, be a it's little a, sooner, maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. an imminent issue, and we all need to come together and do come out come with issues one of it it would be is to find um infusion of cash to put into the system okay and i heard uh, the governor did mention that he was going to um, i guess with the bp deal Mm -hmm. that's part of the aspects but also one of my ideas was to limit the alternative investment program and that's say that again now alternative investment program okay that you know where they invest the grs um funds for different things like, um, like, for example, businesses or other aspects, reducing the percentage that's that's going to it. Okay. Like you know, right now they say they have a, about eight percent return of investment, mm-hmm. but I believe that you know, right now, if you study the market, a lot of the times you'll see with consistent growth mm-hmm. that shows that it might go down to have a crash soon okay so my as my belief is that to protect the the current funds that's in there we should reduce the amount that they're allowed to invest into any kind of okay. program or stocks or bonds or stuff like that that's really okay i got you mm-hmm. um so you, you think just just you know sort of just an infusion of money would help just in general uh, mm-hmm. i mean because i guess when you when you think about what's happening and then just in general you know, just you know, if 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 if, if uh, you know, if someone gave us a billion dollars, I mean, I think that could really make a big difference to what what's happening here. Um, that's well, odd. Uh, go ahead. Yes, I well, I believe that just not just a infusion of cash, but also just building the structure and try, especially with the unfunded uh, mandates that was placed before from the legislature. You know, to ensure that you do your research with, it might sound good uh, to be on the campaign trail, but at the end of the day, is it going to mess with the system or is it going to cause it to crash? So we have to look at not just right now, but for the future. Okay, so we we, we do have a question here. Someone uh, popped up on Facebook Live here and is asking, uh, as a St. John native, uh, what's your position on reapportionment? And we haven't got that far yet. That's on my list <laughs> of many things to talk about. But as this person uh, has popped up with that question, reapportionment uh, and St. John having its own uh, representative. Well, that's one so, of... So, so let's talk about the, oh, okay. the, the concept of reapportionment. I mean, I'm sure you've been hearing that word. And yes. I mean, have you sort of gotten a, sort of some kind of understanding of what it is? And Yeah, I understand what okay. it is. Yeah, I was even at the title in meeting they had with the Attorney General okay. and the, and the um, Board of Elections. Okay. So, from what is it's a good concept when you consider everyone would have a representative that they can go to. And, you know, 
changing the system I could agree with like seeing how you change the system my concern with seeing John in particular is if they have their own representative having to make sure that the locals and getting out to vote uh -huh. because are, are you going even if you change the system are you going to ensure that you go out to let your voices be heard and not let other people make decisions for you uh, as, uh, just getting the votership up yeah votership okay. up and okay. especially with local st jonians they you have to have your your base and make sure that they're in place and that's one of the aspects that if we do change it to that you know we have to look really um strongly about it okay so let, let me let me ask you a question so if i were to say to you that i, I I'm, I'm for reapportionment i think that what has worked mm -hmm. over the last um 10 years that i've been back on st Croix here we need to change the whole structure but what if i said to you um you know instead of 15 we have 11 senators and and if i said to you you know we go from 85 to 55 mm -hmm. um uh, what's your thoughts on that as, as a way to sort of you know less people uh, although some people say less people it, it loses the accountability part portion of it in a sense but what, do, what are your thoughts on that i mean how, how would you how would you argue with me if i told you you know 15 to 11 and and 85 to 55 thousand i'm talking about salary well you know with with me i i can say for me personally even though with even when with the change it wouldn't affect saying john so much because we'll we'll still have to have a representative you still have to have one person there, yeah. yeah so it'll be really for st thomas and st croix to feel like if you want to have less representatives mm -hmm. and that's what your choice is is it's okay yeah what about the salary what about the, the drop in salary well i wouldn't mind the drop in salary okay. for me personally you okay. know that's i could say i could speak for myself okay i would still want to because i'm not running because i'm trying to get a salary okay i'm really trying to be a part of the change i want to see so okay that's the reason why i'm running so for, if it was to reduce i would still run for senate and i'll i wouldn't mind okay. taking a reduced okay salary so you, so you so it's it's uh what's it what is it service above self, self. so that, that's, yeah. that's that's the concept there service yeah. above self uh, service above money mm -hmm. you know you know the, you know if you want to be technical about it um okay i mean i can go for that i can go for that um okay. what the GRS system um needs a lot of money and then some people say that you know the money isn't being given to the GRS um, you know, they take the money and then it just is being used for other things, but it's not going to GRS. I mean, is, is there another like totally complete strategy to the, to the GRS system? Some people say 401k. I mean, do you do you have a do you have a any thoughts on maybe another concept, another angle to sort of to, to strengthen the, the, the retirement system? I was looking at different aspects, even with the 401k and different aspects. But you see the the. Part of the issue with the GRS, I said, was the legislature, the past legislatures have passed unfunded mandates. So, you know, you have to, and nobody wants to unring the bell when that that's already passed. Okay. You know, no one will want to say, okay, well, I want to, ex I want to extend the age I retire. Okay. And you know, those different aspects. Okay. So. It's, it's not just you need an infusion of cash, but also structurally, it needs change. Okay. So you really have to get in depth with it okay. in order to make And that's why so you have to bring all the stakeholders at the table. Okay. Because everyone would even, I could say even for, this might not make me popular with the candidates, but even with the Senate themselves, you know, if you increase the years from how much i think it's six years and it's a certain percentage that the senate gets their um okay. retirement fund even to that like if all of us do sacrifices because mm -hmm. i wouldn't ask anyone to do a sacrifice i wouldn't myself so, do yourself yeah. yeah so i think if we lead by example and that's what leaders do they okay. go to the forefront and say i will i'm willing to do this i'm willing to do that okay so okay Okay, uh, a, a topic that is near and dear to me, and it's also very near and dear to Soup too, um, is health care. Um, and we had the two hurricanes here, and, you know, we, we've had a lot of damage to the hospitals here. 
in St. Thomas. Um, I guess the hospital in St. Thomas is still open, right? Yeah. Uh, so what are, you, what are, you, what are your thoughts it's on, on, uh, on health care and, and, you know, there's health, there's uh, medical tourism, um, you know, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on just the health care um, uh, process in general? One of the things that I was, uh, I'm concentrating on is, is, I say, legislate funds for a health care, a territorial health care plan. We have one mm. that was drafted in 1989. Okay. From what I understand, they're trying to redo it and hopefully it takes it it takes place because we need not only to just concentrate on the hospitals themselves but also incorporate the private in this, the private companies and have a territorial plan mm -hmm. in place to help at least show what vision we're trying to go what direction we're trying to lead okay and to and especially with after the storms mm -hmm. you'll need a plan in place that if this happens this is our this is plan a this is plan b okay so that's one of the aspects also to help to bring in for what that's one of the the things that people have come up to me about is that the private the public sector needs uh in uh, insurance agent like in insurance companies to come here okay. so that aspect i want to work on okay. to help attract a private in, in insurance industry to come here to not only just have the government have insurance but that's one of the problems with uh with the with the unfunded hospital bills yeah. is we need health insurance yeah and so so i i've never heard anybody mention so there there is a there is a virgin islands health care plan yeah there is a territorial health care plan uh, okay and so it was drafted so, in 1989 so as, as long as you're a resident of the virgin islands and i guess you pay your monthly premium you, no it's a it was a plan that was in place to show like what deficits or what like with the health care industry like with the hospitals mm. with the private entities it, it, it was a plan like you is uh it outlines what area the territory needs to work on okay and those different aspects so that's why i say we need to upgrade it okay. update it too because we're in 2018 now okay. so we need you know okay uh what are your thoughts on um um you know like mental health um, and, and, and those kind of things. A lot of people are just concerned about mental health. You know, there's no way you have to send your loved ones, your elderly, away because we don't have the facilities here to sort of deal with that. Um, and then there's just a lot of homeless people in general walking around that need need attention, need a place to sleep, need you know, need drugs, need support. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, it's in. The, um, I also have that in my platform, and the I know the legislature recently. Uh, they passed some funds to renovate a building to start uh a f well no that is that's they they recently uh passed some funds to help with health with mental health but i want to make sure that we have additional funding continue because okay. it's not just going it's not going to be solved with one set of fun okay. funding you need a comprehensive and there there are different um organizations that help with the mental health also okay and i think that we do need to really seriously take uh a look at our mental health structure as we have it you know i have oh. people in my life who's been affected with mental health yes. so i know it's important and we need that that structure in place to really move us forward yeah it's there and there for me for me personally because my mom has dementia alzheimer's and so we just literally have to send her away just mm -hmm. re very very recently like in the last couple of weeks because there's no place here for her to go to it's true you know mm -hmm. so um you know it's, it's very passionate for me to hopefully uh, you guys can get a, a place built renovated that can you know provide its services and you know uh, i know i know there's some stuff i mean i know you know some some uh, services now mm -hmm. but you know i guess they need to be strengthened they need to be stronger they need to be and more of the it support yeah more that they of it need. yeah, yeah. more of it um you know kind of thing so you i mean you're all in favor of that kind yes, of stuff I'm all, all in favor and that's part of the territorial health care plan as okay. well you could incorporate that because when you have a vision for what you're trying to do mm. you could it's easier for you to accomplish it 
as opposed to just doing a little piece here, a little piece there. Mm. You need to have the general vision. Okay. Or the overall vision of where you're trying to go. Okay. Yeah, yeah I know mental health is, is also very serious for Soup too because I know um, his mom is blind. Mm -hmm. And so we both, we're both of being affected um, um, in, in some levels of lack of adequate services, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. um, like maybe be provided by the Department of Health or Human Services, and there are some stuff. Though I'm not saying there's not, but I guess we need more of it. Yeah. Um, to, to, to to support the community. As you say, I, I I've been personally affected with mental health, um, with people who's had mental health issues as mm -hmm. well, and I do see the need, and I and it's not something that's easy to to handle on your own. I I know someone who was in the states. Luckily, they were in the states. And they mm -hmm. had a mental episode, but uh, but they were able to get the treatment that was n needed mm -hmm. to make them get better. Okay. And I know someone who personally who's here who's with um, mental issues, sure. but their family is taking care of them. And but what I'm s what we need is not just not just those who have someone in place, but to make sure that those who don't. Or, the, or those families that can't mm -hmm. take it on their own mm -hmm. are able to get the support that they need. need yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got another question here. Someone says, if elected, would you be willing to sponsor legislation to rewrite our property tax laws? Uh, uh, property tax laws to ensure Native Virgin Islands are able to retain their land. I, of course, I would want to have I believe right now they're doing market value or something like that. Okay. So, but I believe um, Roach passed a few bills. Okay. But we do need, especially for St. John. Okay. That's 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 the main. The, yeah, yeah. The focus and of the whole the tax. Whole, yeah, the, the tax whole tax issue. issue. Yeah. And you know it it has a double whammy being that it's two thirds of it is national park. Park. Yes. Serve it is so all of that t is in play. Okay. So it's a matter of rewriting the law or doing the, your due diligence and doing your research to make okay. sure you address those kind of issues. Okay, 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 good. Um, so the next thing you got on here is education. Uh, you said alternative education, expensive career and technical education, both secondary and post-secondary, in order to improve workforce development and provide opportunities for Virgin Islanders. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, um, I guess you're talking about enhancing technical um, technical training in from high school level. So yeah. by that I mean being able, you know, you're you're in ninth grade and you know part of your classes you you know you take up like when I went to Central, I mm -hmm. took up business classes because for some reason I thought I was going to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. So but people took um, soup soup took pump plumbing, no no he took AC. Uh, is that the kind of thing you're talking about that from high school yeah. you can you can get into a get into a, a skilled kind of hands-on training program? I know it was, it has been scaled back. I know a lot of people who were like my husband and stuff, they they w were introduced to their different fields also while they were in high school. Okay. So it was easy to transition. Once you get them at least exposed to the different um, technical jobs, yes. you know, they, and then not everyone is going to college. So we have to build the workforce we want to see. So okay. you introduce it from from high school and then you go onward okay. and expand it to even if you leave high school and give okay. them those opportunities. Okay. And not just with AC and with different construction jobs, but also even in the medical field. Yes. There's some jobs in the medical field that doesn't require a, a college diploma mm. that it requires, like if you have a, a certification, mm. that that way you could get a job and it supplements our medical, our medical. Yeah, the whole hospital yeah, system. Yeah, the hospital system, system, system and, and everything. everything. Yes. Okay. Um, so what, what about what about also to that, that? So that's that's technical, you know, technical education um, in high school. But what about technical education? Let's say um, Joe Blow, you know, moves here at 21 years old, for whatever reasons. Um, you know, if we if we had a technical school that he could go to, mm -hmm. I mean, he's out of high school. He didn't go to high school here, but you know, he's here. Maybe he's, he came out. His family's 20, 21 years old. Uh, having a school that he could go to to learn plumbing and carpentry and and um, 
you know, solar panel technology and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, that's why I said it was said secondary and post-secondary. So okay. afterwards, even if you leave uh, high school or if you weren't from here, but at least have the, the expand the, the career and technical that we have here to incorporate what kind of workforce we're trying to see. Okay. So it, it includes that as well. And I know the Department of Labor and Department of Education also provides funding for okay. that because they want to do workforce development. That's okay. one of the biggest things that they're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, that's one of their big initiatives, mm -hmm. you know, workforce development, yeah. Um, and then here you say introduce legislation that would provide a greater voice for our community in educational decisions, uh, more authority to the Board of Education. Yes. Uh, explain a little bit because we, we did have a lady here that's running for office, not office, but she's running for the Board of Education, uh, very passionate about education and just making some changes. Uh, but I guess you're saying here that... Um, to give them more governance okay when it comes to educational decisions one of the the aspects i was looking at was having the superintendent picked by the board of education or at least approved by them uh -huh. and that way it holds uh, the board more accountable and okay. people will pay attention to the board of education more okay to me the board of education should be a key component in our education system. If you're trying to do education reform, mm -hmm. you have to have it where you, it's not centralized, mm -hmm. where the board doesn't have as much decisions and so people doesn't really pay attention to what's going on with oh. it. But if you give them more governance mm -hmm. now, now you're gonna pay attention to, okay, who am I putting, my school isn't, isn't performing how it should. Okay these board members are in charge of the superintendent who's supposed to deal with operations. Okay. So now we as a community will have a voice in who we have in place okay. for the board of education. So let me ask you a question. You mentioned there that um, you, you would, you, you're, you're hoping that you can suggest to you, to your, your colleagues, if you get in that the board, the, 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 uh, um, the board, the board of education would pick the commissioner no, the superintendent. The superintendent, okay. Yeah, the, I look at a model with Florida. Florida, the commissioner is picked by the governor. Okay. But the superintendents are picked by the Board of Education. Okay, I got you. Okay. And the superintendent is more of the hands-on day-to-day okay, operations of the school. Okay. So that way you have the balance and power between the two entities. Okay. So how, would you be able to convince the rest, of the, the rest of the crew that that's the best way to do this moving forward? I mean... Because this really, really comes down yeah. to, I mm -hmm. mean, convincing, you know, the rest of the guys, hey, man, you know, this is how this has got to work. Because, you know, some people say, no, it didn't work that way. And, you know, then we, we have a vote, and, and, you know, it's eight to seven, you know, by, the, you know, by one man's head, we, 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 we changed it. In most So are you, are, you, are you able or willing to, to convince your, you know, your other crew, crew members? And that's where you need someone who is going to do their research. Okay. And with me, I did my research when, before I decided to come out with it. I looked at different states, and most states, that's how it's done. The okay. superintendent is actually picked by the Board of Education. Okay. And if you bring the data, I'm sure at least you, you brought it forward. Okay. And you can come with data to back up what you are your decisions or what your plans are okay and if they at the end of the day still see your data and decide to to go against it and and it shows that it's for the betterment of the community okay the public now need to pay attention and that's that's one of the aspects we as a community need to do is pay attention to what our public officials are doing mm -hmm. not just on election day or just pick someone because you know, I heal him up all the time and mm. we're, we're good friends. We need to start really looking at what they're bringing to the table, what they're proposing, mm. what their platform is. Even with my platform, I, I, before I came out with it, uh. I went to all three islands. I said, does this work for, and I met with various members of the community and mm. I, uh, I presented my platform. Okay. And I asked them, does this, does this, re does this work for you? Does this does this speak to you? Okay. So, before I came out, I made sure I did my research and I did what I had to do in order for me to 
presented the proper way. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on here, you talk about um, youth programs, after school, educational, athletics, and recreational arts and crafts and that kind of stuff. So um, I guess we need more, we need more, we need more um, youth programs, after care, after school care kind of things. And even support for the youth programs. I work a lot with even from high school, mm -hmm. I did. Um, I I used to volunteer and work with an after school program in high school. When I went to college, I used to tutor at an outreach center mm -hmm. across the street from my college. And when I came back, I started to help with a a, a nonprofit uh -huh. organization, mm -hmm. the St. John Sporting Center Inc. Okay. And also, I also help volunteer with sports parks and recreation. Okay. So. I I've, I've always been involved in 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 helping with the youth yeah. and I believe that you know that's a key component okay. giving them an alternative before they go out to, to the streets mm -hmm. you know and especially when with mentorship a lot of them needs it you know mm -hmm. so that's why I say we need to give more support and more funding and Okay. Stuff like that too. Youth program, preventative okay. measures. Okay. You mentioned a word there that uh, my mother used to mention to me years ago. Um, it's something that you do in your idle time, mm -hmm. and that word is volunteer. Mm -hmm. So you you know you volunteer and, and you volunteer your time to do X A B C X Y Z. Uh, just, just speak to you know because some people don't like to volunteer because some people feel you know okay if I'm going to spend my time they want to be compensated in some capacity for mm -hmm. it but you know volunteering is just just that you go somewhere every saturday morning for two hours and you just do it you know um you know out of sort of out of the kindness of your heart you just volunteer your time for whatever the cause may be so you've done a little bit of that right yeah that's that's so i've done it a lot <laughs> uh, okay i've done as i said in high school i did it college up to now, you know, just the other day I was scoring a basketball game, you know. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's um, a part of the aspect that I believe, like, if you want to help your community, is where, where tr we need to have a community effort. Okay. And, you know, if all of us do our little part, too, to improve the community, mm. it'll improve it for everyone. You know? Okay. It, I mean, I know not everyone could have the time, you know, mm. and capabilities to do it but those who do do it mm -hmm. is 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 a is a very it's a very um beneficial yeah it's rewarding yeah it's rewarding yeah. yes especially when you see them um people you work with mm. or youth that you work with improve or they have their accomplishments is you you also feel it because you know where they came from mm -hmm. and what issues they have and what they have succeeded with okay. so that's why i always I've been a proponent of volunteering for okay. any aspects. Uh, a couple more questions about education. So, uh, are you in favor of teachers getting uh, more, getting higher pay? Well, it, my sister, as a matter of fact, just graduated from um, college and uh, in education. Okay. And so, I'm trying to convince her to stay here to work as a teacher because you know we we need yeah. good teachers and and one of the aspects that you know everyone looks at is the pay okay so if if the teachers get more funding we'll be able to attract more teachers to the territory okay and one of the things she was mentioning was a lot of her classmates also it, it not necessarily be um the salary but you can promote it like an excursion mm -hmm. like the bahamas did it even though and china even though the salary wasn't a lot of money, mm -hmm. but if you show it like you, you attract a lot of young teachers mm -hmm. to the Virgin Islands. If you put it like a excursion as mm -hmm. a the whole package, you know, so. come to the Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. teach, and 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 then go on the beach after work, kind of thing. Yes. Okay. Because you say even the salary, I think for China was twenty thousand. Oh really? Okay. But people would go because they want to see China, they want to experience it, they they want to go into the culture, they yeah. and they want to go some place dif different. Different, yeah. So if we incorporate that, also. Okay. As a. As way a way of, to get teachers here. Yeah, attract them so to is, is come it, here. So is your sister graduated from school here or graduated in, in the, the state? And so you're trying to get her to come down. Yeah, I'm trying to get her to stay here. <laughs> Are you having any luck with that? 
Yeah, she's she's open to it. So she's uh, actually she said she's going to put in her application. Okay. So, <laughs> and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. We got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Perfect. Because um, you know, education is really just you know. I mean, you listen to, you know, I listen to a lot of the talk shows when I can, and education is just falling apart, um, the lack of teachers, you know, we're not even sure yet the state of schools come this, you know, schools in summer break now, come, you know, August, September time frame, are, are we going to be in the same schools, double session still, uh, any, any thoughts on that? I mean, you know, well, you know some schools are supposed to be... Uh, uh, transform into sort of like uh, modular uh, modular buildings and yes. kind of thing. And with St. John, they're doing that. They have the modular units on the baseball field. And oh, they're already up? They're actually working on it. We, we see them working on it. Oh, really? So it's in progress? <laughs> yeah, it's in progress. So okay. I'm waiting to see if it meets the de if it will reach the deadline, but they are um, pushing forward with Put in the modular units on okay. on Saint John. So, so what did what did what did so the, is that modular unit for is it high school or because there's no high schools on Saint John. Yes, right? K so, through eight. So that's what they're building. Is it, the modular is going to be K through eight? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's okay. no high school on Saint John. Okay. Right now. Well, except for a private school. So. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So you know, education is important. Any, anything that we can do or you guys can do if you get in there to sort of improve it, make it a little easier. Uh, and and your four your four Virgin Islands. Uh, you know, version of history class. You know, you're yeah. for that kind of stuff, of right? Course. Of course. Uh, I, and I had some good, great history teachers in my day. I think that's why I, I, I liked history. Okay. You know, and I always believe in um, your history doesn't, our history didn't start as us being slaves. We have to look at our whole history. Yeah, the whole history, yeah. Because we have to understand where we come from and what kind of background we have, you know. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm a big proponent of history and learning your history because you learn so much from history. Mm. Like, um, I would say when I was in high school, I used to pay attention to a lot of Holocaust and, mm. and Hitler and how he utilized patriotism to blame a certain group. So mm. now that when we use those same tactics now, it's like you are able to recognize it because you studied it before. Okay. So, like, you know, after, okay. especially after 9-11, they used to use it a lot. But uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. Okay, and so you talk about uh, including music and art programs. So you are you an art lover? I like art. I, I actually studied, well, I won't say studied. I was in art class. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to draw on all the things in high school. I, I wasn't the best. My brother is way better than me. Okay. He went to art school and okay. friends, stuff like that. But, you know, I, I'm a proponent of the arts, too. Okay. Because you, you, get a, you get an all-around person mm -hmm. when it comes to arts and sports and not just academics, but to yeah. channel those, your, your passions into things that you, wanna, you want to, um, that you might want to take as a career. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing wrong with a good, uh, a good painting, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so let's go on here. Let's talk about enforcement. You say support funding for uh, completion of the state of the art forensic lab in order to expedite processing processing of solving crime. I think isn't isn't that getting this lab here? Isn't that been around? Them trying to get it here for a while now. So I recently they passed funding to renovate an actual building. So that's why I said to. To make sure to provide funding for the ex to make it a state of the art okay. forensic lab. So I know they did provide funding. The legislature did pa pass legislation to, and they located an actual building to. Uh, that will be the yes, forensic the lab. Yeah, forensic lab. Yes. Okay, where is that? Which island is that going to be? Saint on? Thomas. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I I do know that that was taking place. So okay. we do, and I. Not only us would use a forensic lab, but you could also market it to the other islands okay. as well. Okay. You know, so yeah, that's that's the concept of of um, looking at it all around. For yeah. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this: So, as far as as far one of the things that I mean, I would like to see is uh, some kind of um, camera system put up. Mm -hmm. You know that 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 you know is, is observing. Um, you know, street activity to catch people doing things that they shouldn't do, um, because obviously the police here are not everywhere, 
and not even anywhere. They're not everywhere. You know, they can't be. But I think there's technology out there that that can help. Um, whether whether it's going to be a deterrent or not is one thing. But it, you could definitely, if you're doing wrong, you can be recorded doing wrong, and that could be used as evidence, I guess, against you to to, to prosecute you. And that's true, and that's part of the reason why I say we need to build our economic base too, because mm -hmm. when you have more funding, more tax dollars, you could put in place mm -hmm. like the different like camera systems and okay. different aspects like that. You have more uh, more funding to move around, as opposed to us just being reactive. Okay, we could be proactive. So that's why we have to really build our economic base in order for us to move forward with getting um, the funding for different projects we need okay okay so all right so uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit some of some things here on my list here uh, we've probably talked a little bit about some of this stuff here but um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is the, this whole this whole um, you know uh, weed cannabis uh, you know uh, the medical legalization you know what are your thoughts on like medical marijuana getting that sort of rolling here I mean there's a lot of states that are, are sort of in that now and they're getting into it uh, I mean for me personally I think it'll work here mm -hmm. um, but what, what do you think I agree with it I uh, although you know me and my my mother is in a totally different generation so yeah. she she doesn't agree with me <laughs> <laughs> with it but and I'm, I've never smoked or never was interested in it mm -hmm. but if you look at the data when you look at the, the when you actually study it 29 states already including our neighbors Puerto Rico yeah. at least has medical marijuana and if you are this if you are really serious about increasing your tax bases you got to look at these industries that's up and coming mm -hmm. you don't want to be the last one who who finally decide after um, South Carolina and all those different states? All the other fifty yeah. states, yeah. <laughs> Do it. So I I'm a proponent of at least, and we've already put it on a referendum. Yes. And the the, the most majority, are, yeah, most people, people was are in pro. favor of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I do believe that we do need to open up into at least medical marijuana. Okay. And if if to me even recreational. As long as you protect people like me, mm -hmm. rights like you don't smoke in public areas or you have sp specific designated spots for yes. you know businesses that cater to that kind of yes. things. But as long, but we do need to get get on board before yeah. it's too late. It's before, too late before yeah. they're the last person yeah. to finally decide to do it. Yeah, in, in my circles of people that I talk to, we're going to be last. <laughs> we're going to be last. All the states are going to pass it, and then we're going to be the 52nd um, place to Because I think even Puerto Rico now, they're even considering recreational. Too. Yeah. So I know they already passed medicinal. Uh, yeah. So now, yeah. you know. That's the kind of the next step. Okay, well, that's good. That's encouraging. Because I, I think that, um, um, that as some people like to call it a low a low-hanging fruit mm -hmm. of a way to sort of stimulate the economy, because as you said earlier, we need something besides tourism. Yeah another industry but you, you you didn't mention medical marijuana but you mentioned um like small businesses and, and that kind of thing uh, and you could even market it as in your tourism industry because okay. you know a lot of people travel to colorado just to get that experience or to california yeah just to yeah utilize it yeah. and so you could incorporate that in your tourism industry as well yeah I, I think i tell i tell a story all the time i think that once we could do that I think people are, and, and we can advertise it on like CNN and, and just wherever in the states. And if I'm if I'm at home with my wife, my girlfriend, and we're we're watching, and a, a commercial pops on and says, "Man, come to St. Croix because you can smoke here." I'm like, mm -hmm. honey, pack your bags, let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's that, that, that's like uh, like a grand scale thing for me. I mean, it, yeah. it will definitely bring people here. What about um? I, I don't know too much about St. John as far as hotels go, but um, one of the things that I think that we need here on St. Croix is another hotel. And I know there's been some talks about it in the past, and I got excited a couple of years ago, even four years back, that when someone had said that there was going to be building a, a, a hotel up more on the east side, mm -hmm. uh, on the South Shore east side there, and it never really happened. I think they, they had a big sign up, and it never really materialized. But, you know, I mean, I don't know if St. John needs more hotels. I know that there's, there's supposed to be another hotel being built on St. Uh, Thomas. St. Thomas. But I think that's more of a 
that's like a private industry. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the area there. They're, they're uh, Yachty even? Yeah, they're, they, I guess mm -hmm. they're spending their own money yeah. to put up a hotel there. Um, but, you know, St. Croix, we don't have, um, we need something more state-of-the-art, something a little bigger, something with a little more fun and attraction so people can come down and, 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 and enjoy And you have it. the land for it. Yeah. So, and I can speak for as a tourist, as a sto as a staycation tourist okay that you know i come to st croix often and stay at the hotels and stuff yeah. and so you know you have a lot to offer and if you have if you build up your tourism industry even more mm -hmm. like you know so if people actually come and visit it you have a lot of cultural items mm -hmm. that you know you won't see uh, other places okay and if you, and if it's marketed and you have the space because sometimes you know it'll, it'll be difficult to get a hotel room yeah but if you have that the the hotel space and to me that's the best way to move your industry right as opposed to the cruise ship yes i know yes we want to hear cruise ship but the people who spend the most money are the overnight guests yes so if you attract those, that's more money into the territory. Into the territory, yeah. Because I know as a as a frequent cruise ship passenger, you know, for the most part, you spend a little on a tour or excursion. You mm. go to lunch and then you go back on the ship. Mm. But now the, a lot of the ships are having the same things that we we're selling: perfume. Yeah, uh, right, right jewelry, on the ship. Right on the, the ship, ship, so you don't have to leave the ship. For duty free. Yeah. So it's. So now we're competing with the cruise ships as well. That we're, tr that we're trying to get to come here. Exactly. Yeah. So how much benefits are we really getting from the cruise industry? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a big believer in even doing an eco tur tourism. Mm -hmm. You have it. You have the capabilities of doing that because okay. a lot of people like to. Because if you if you just look at it, um, if you just build something that you could see in Florida, mm -hmm. what would attract you to come here but yeah. if you build it uh, like an eco tourism a lot of people are wanting to reduce their carbon footprint and all those different aspects so you tap into that industry i think it'll be real beneficial to the cruisian territory the, okay. yeah, the, the cruisian island okay mm -hmm. so we, we had another uh, this is not a question i think this this uh, person is just basically making a comment here she says <coughs> excuse me she says i love candidates who volunteer Thanks for everything uh, you already done for our community. Uh, you know, Sherry Ann Francis for Center at Large. Oh, do you have any plans for health insurance for individuals, small business uh, owners, contract workers? Uh, I think this is a huge drawback for young and young and business people uh, coming up, coming home, coming back home after college. So I guess you kind of touched about yeah. you know touch about the the medical stuff, but um, because I, I did mention also that we do need to attract insurance companies here mm -hmm. because i can tell you as a young person who came back to and i didn't have insurance through my job mm -hmm. it's like it's when you start trying to quote for a medical insurance medical insurance you're like what i'm healthy right now why yeah. would i want to spend <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that kind of money you know so i do believe that we do need uh medical insurance and that's one of the aspects I, w I was actually looking into i know one of the biggest ppos is vi equicare so okay. i was looking at those different aspects of how we could really encourage or what we need to do mm -hmm. to uh to attract in this the medical insurance okay. industry here okay uh let me ask you also too about um and, and there's, there's this whole thing of the small business and, and, and encouraging small business uh, and then, you know, small business development. And then there's also this thing of, of uh, economic growth. So I guess they all kind of go together, but you have, to, you, have to, you have to allow someone to have a, an ideal and, 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 and build a business. And then, you know, that will sort of develop the, the, you know, the economy because of hiring people and then they're mm -hmm. starting to pay taxes back. Um, but one of the things that um, I, I don't know if we have the you know like I think I think there's an, a the department here that basically goes out and tries to to recruit companies to come here, uh, big yeah. Fortune 500, the EDA, the EDA, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I always feel like you know if, if you know when when they go out and they you know they talk to let's say IBM for example and try to encourage those guys to come here and then the guys come here for a tour that our infrastructure is not adequate. I'm talking about no sidewalks, roads are bad, the lighting is bad, and so why would, you know, why would I want to 
move my company here uh, with 20 employees and they have all this stuff in the states so that that, that sort of ties into my, my the moral of my story is it ties into you know you know what are you what are your what are your thoughts on infrastructure because i would be turned off if, if i was a fortune 500 ceo coming here and doing a tour and it, you know the infrastructure is not adequate and I, I do agree that we do need to build up our infrastructure. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the territory as a, as a market, as something you want to market, mm -hmm. you, want, you want to look at the, all aspects of it, the roads. I, we even looked at, um, I was a part of a walkability group, and, one of the, and they studied, we even did a walk audit okay. and to show how, how pedestrian friendly is the Virgin Islands. So, so you can imagine what they said where where um, one of the things they said, we have one of the fewest, I think, sidewalks and different things like that. But we are like above, uh, above average in speed bumps. So if you look <laughs> at it, so if you look at even to those aspects, you, you, you want to have- Yeah, we got speed bumps everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so they said we're above average yeah. with speed bumps. So it, you got to look at the different aspects when it comes to your infrastructure and are you friendly, pedestrian friendly, or okay. even with our utilizing our broadband and our internet and, okay. and, and especially after the storm with even now with the cell phone service and different okay. aspects. So infrastructure is key to building your economy. Okay. So you do have to invest in it and okay. you and brought in your um, tax base as well. So okay. that even ties into to, to that. You okay. know, because you want to attract these businesses here okay. and you need to make sure that the funding is in place for those. Okay. Okay. Things. All right. So another thing that we have here is um, the whole thing of WAPA. Um, you know, everybody's bills going up here, 15, 16 bucks starting, I think it's this month or next month. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting hit hard. I, I, can, I continue to hear horror stories of people just having these huge bills. You know, they didn't have them before the storm, mm -hmm. and now they got them now. And I don't quite understand the connection that is drawn there. How, how does WAPA do this? Cause um, you know, and, and I read, too, that I thought was so funny. Someone, someone said that, um, I, th I think it might have been someone from WAPA or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but they, 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 you know, when they were sort of questioning the $16 monthly increase, the, the mm -hmm. person said, well, you know, we haven't had, a, we haven't had an increase you know, in a year. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I just thought it was just strange that they said it that way, you know. So, we haven't had one in a year, so we're going to give you one now. And everybody's, you know, still fussing about these huge bills. I mean, I, I just didn't un quite understand that. But, you know, nevertheless, we got to pay these bills or else yeah. we're going to be in the dark. Exactly. Um, and, you know, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, can we get, can we, can we get... Can we can we make it more affordable? I mean, and and that's why you try to invest in renewables and different um, aspects. But you know, I I was I thought it was interesting. For example, the for Saint the Saint Thomas Solar Park. Mm. Like I don't know if you saw the picture, but it got totally yeah, destroyed. Detroit, yeah. Yeah. So with renewables, we have to look at the different aspects, especially being in a hurricane prone area yeah, zone, yeah. what yeah was going to benefit us and we do need to invest in renewable energy mm. in order for us to get our bills lowered mm. i think some of the things i heard i believe the governor or someone spoke about was also reducing their they're trying to get smaller i guess substations okay. as opposed to um some of the big costly okay um units that they have, have. currently okay and Hopefully, those kind of different ideas will help reduce our 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 bills. Yeah. But also to incorporate renewables in in um, renewable energy into our uh, into our plans as a territory as a whole. I'm pro. Yeah, if you're for all, that, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. all for uh, all yeah. that, especially to reduce our carbon f footprint. You know, yeah. instead instead of just using oil. Yeah. And those different aspects we need to have renewable energy okay. utilized. Okay. Um, another, another, another bullet item here is the uh, Attorney General. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Attorney General, I don't, I don't know if you're aware or not, the Attorney General is, is, a, is a position that is, or a person is selected by the governor. Yes. And, you know, we, we always, uh, I guess I always feel like that's probably not the right way that should be done and that the mm -hmm. Attorney General should be 
just as you're running for office, they should be running for office too. Maybe there should be two guys running for the, the, for the position of attorney general and they're out hitting the streets in the talk shows themselves trying to win that position. And you know, I, before I was, I wasn't a proponent of it. And I'll tell you the reason why I always felt like, you know, that kind of leaves you, your attorney general open for, to be corrupt. Like, let's say I'm a big time drug dealer mm. and I decide I want to sponsor your, your campaign and those different aspects. But I've, I've, I'm, I think I've, I've changed my position from that and I'm more open to, cause I've done the research and I see that most attorney generals are picked, are voted on in mm. the United States. So as long as we have a lot of oversight and make sure mm. that, you know, that the, it's not corruptible. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's yeah. a fair election. Yeah, it's a fair election and it, and it wouldn't, I'm all, I'm for okay. having the Attorney General being voted on by the public. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, um, <clears throat> let's talk about... Um, Tourism a little bit, um, and you mentioned you know tourism. I, I, it's so funny because I, I hear this commercial on the radio all the time about tourism bringing like eighty percent. I know we touched about this a little bit more, but um, if you could talk a little bit more about the second the second industry because tourism is an industry that brings money in, but the Virgin Islands is needing a second industry. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit more about that because that's important. We we got to have something else. Yeah, and, and and a lot of that, a lot of that, you know, like a lot of that tourism is is from ships that come to St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. But you know, if, if 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 ships went away, you know, or stop coming here, then then then, you know, that eighty percent drops down to twenty. And what industry do we have? And I know you talked about agriculture as a way, but you'll be able to convince your colleagues that you know this this is what we have to do to 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 sort of get get us moving here. And I look at the agricultural industry because it's not just you can it's not doesn't just work within itself. It mm. works with other industries like tourism as well. Mm. Like you know, Hawaii utilizes it. To, um, people visit Hawaii and they use their agriculture to one save their green space. Mm. And you know, people want to go on tours of their different um, high their different. Um, different farms and different different aspects you could also use your crops to manufacture products so that brings manufacturing jobs here as well okay so it it ties into the the virgin islands economy very well okay. and that's why i believe that that's one of the perfect uh, industries to really concentrate on and making sure that we have you know the support and the legislation and the different aspects in place to help um, grow it okay we and uh, now let's say most of our food comes are Im is imported in mm -hmm. you know how are we going to feed ourselves is especially if you're talking about um, being more autonomous more if we, even if we want to talk about our being um, our status you know we have to look at those different aspects how are we going to move forward mm -hmm. uh, on our own if we were to leave and if we build up the structure in place, mm. you know, so that we can be um, more self-sufficient mm. and have our own, we could talk about those different aspects and be more prepared to do it. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, we had another, another couple questions here, and I, and I think that you've probably talked a little bit about this, but the question just popped up. Um, someone says, what are your plans for education? Uh, so if you could just, yeah. you know, sort of, to, to, okay, well, one... Yeah, so I guess if the person's watching now, you, they, 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 they can hear. Well, um, edu with education, as I said, I want to give more governance to the Board of Education. And that way, the people have more of a say in their educational decisions that's made because we vote for the members of the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the key components I'm looking at. And also to expand our alternative... alternative uh, alternative education programs because not everyone is going to go to college so we have to have it in place to not only cater to our young people or our people people in high school or out of high school mm -hmm. but also to build our workforce if if you say you you're going to bring uh, industry in here are your people prepared to take those jobs mm -hmm. and that's what we have to make sure when we're looking at 
different aspects of the industry is to prepare our people to take those jobs as opposed to bringing in people to handle these yeah. different jobs. So yeah. we, we have to also build our workforce at the same time we're building our, we're diversifying our economy. Okay. So what about local in, workforce? Yeah, local, local workforce. workforce. I got you. Yes. So okay. Okay, and then another question here, uh, and you sort of touched on this a little bit too. Someone says, can you share your thoughts on law enforcement? So saying, John, be uh, self-sustained? Self with yeah, law enforcement? Uh, I guess that's two questions. I'm, I, I guess that's two questions. One is about law enforcement, and then, and then it says, should St. John be self-sustained? Uh, I'm not sure. It sounds like two questions. But law enforcement. With law, with, with law enforcement in general, I, you know, one of the aspects I see that we have an issue with is we need more manpower and to attract people to actually join the war, the law enforcement, the police department. Mm. You know, they, I know they recently increased the salary the to four, yeah, to yeah, 40, salary, yeah. yeah, to four, $40,000. And, you know, that's a good step in the, in the right direction. Yeah. But, but we also need to have it where, um, I think we have to have, for, for example, I, when I was in high school, we had, when I was, it was in my American government class. We did a tour of the jails. We did a tour of the, the police department, the legislature. It gave you a little snippet of a little viewpoint of those different entities. And I think we need to tie in more of those um, programs. I know with St. John, they used to have PALS, the police athletic league and mm. different. We need to fund more of those preventative and tie, have more community policing. I actually went to a forum about that. Okay. Community policing where the VIPD reached out to members of the community to ask them what they view community policing and what aspects they think the police department could do to help um, with, uh, with building up the, you know, their relationship. Yeah, with the community. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I felt that, you know, they had a lot of good programs, and I know some, pro like we didn't see, I did mm -hmm. the forum for them, and different programs like that where the, the VIPD actually reaches out to the community, mm -hmm. you know, those aspects build that relationship, and more people would not look at it like, okay, I wouldn't want to, that kind of job. They'll be like, oh, I, I'm interested in that job, you know, to make it more appealing. Yeah. To, okay. to, to, to the younger people to say, you know, okay, I like this off, you know, this, this, this seems like a career for me. Okay. And I think we do need to, is, if that's what they really wanted to know. And I'm thinking when they're talking about St. John being more self-sustained. Yeah, self-sustained, yeah. I know after the storm, and hopefully, you know, this takes place, you know, we were cut off. Like our electricity, we have to wait for the east end of St. Thomas to be fixed before we could even get any yeah, electricity. You guys got a cable to go over. Yeah. So while everybody was at um, 5%, 10%, we were still at zero for months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like if St. John, I, I'm all for having our own. We had one before, but we, we should have be more self-sustained in case we get cut off. Because like, for example, the boats... You know, after the storm, a few weeks after the storm, the boats weren't going back and forth. We were mm. totally cut off. Yeah. So we have to have mechanisms in place to be in, be at least self-sustained for a period of time. Okay. You know, have our own gener electrical generating yeah. capabilities and okay. different things like that. So I'm a proponent in St. John having its own, for, you know. Yeah. Cause so has any of that been corrected since... Uh, since the uh, since the storm, I know they the, one of the proposals I saw that they were the I think the governor was pushing was having uh, the one in the cruise bay and like a generation unit in cruise bay and coral bay. Okay. So hopefully w with that we'll get some kind of self sustainment. You know. Okay. And in general, Saint John needs more attention. You know, we often you know we're the quietest. But we have our own issues. Issues too. Yeah, we 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 need more attention when it comes to different things. Like for example, all our capital improvement funds. Like every year, you're appropriated. Saying uh, there's a 
St. John Capital Improvement Funds. All of that goes to wait, um, hauling waste from St. John to St. Thomas. So it oh, doesn't really? go to any infrastructure or anything. To, so, oh, really? Does yeah. it cost that much to haul waste? Because it's a transfer station, so that's that's what it's yeah, a transfer station. So it can't the waste can't stay on Saint Saint John. Okay. It has to come to okay. to Baboni dump. Yeah. So in a year's time, uh, on I guess a few days a week, maybe yeah. it adds up. But all our capital improvement funds goes to to to, 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 pay, to that. pay for that to pay for that service. Yeah. Yeah. So we need like funding to build okay. up our infrastructure and the different aspects that we need. And I, to me, that should come out of the general fund. Okay. You know. Okay. The, mm -hmm. the infamous general fund, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um. And then one of the last things here is we have on here is the uh, voter registration drive. Mm -hmm. Um. You, you've, been, you've been doing that? You've been sort of going around and, and just sort of encouraging people? So you're uh, independent, right? Yes, I'm independent. Okay. But, I mean, you, you've been sort of just going around and sort of trying to encourage, you know, get people on your side and encourage them to, you know, I'm a, to I'm, vote. I'm a big proponent of voting. Even before I decided to run for office, I used to nag all kind of people. Even my siblings will tell you I would nag them, you need to register to vote because if you don't, get registered you don't have a voice mm -hmm. and and oftentimes it's the same people who put in the same if if you want change mm -hmm. you need to be a part of that change you need to make sure that you register to vote you have a say in what's going on in your community you pay mm -hmm. attention to what your your representatives are doing mm -hmm. and i i'm a big proponent especially with young people mm -hmm. like when i was when i came back from college I would be the youngest person at a Senate hearing or a town hall meeting because I was interested in what's going on in my community. Mm. You know, we we tend to, let's say, what does politics have to do with my day-to-day -day life? But it affects you, even if, even the stateside politics, for mm. example, um, with the 21st century grants mm. and stuff that um, I believe uh, Donald Trump was trying to take away, they have after school programs in the territory that benefited from those programs. Okay. So we if we pay attention to how these dynamics are taking place and making sure our voices is heard in being a voter, you know, when if you don't ha as I said you don't if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Yeah. I I want, I will tell you I voted for you or I didn't vote for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to listen to what my concerns is. And I've I've been pushing that, especially with young people to to really start gain politically active because one of the biggest times in American history that they did a lot for young people mm -hmm. was in the sixties. Mm -hmm. And why? Because a lot of the young people, college students were were heavily involved in politics. That's how, you know, we got a lot of the programs where you get um, school, money for school and mm. those, oh, for college, grants, Pell Grants, all those different aspects. It came from when the young people are mobilized and take, uh, are, are very involved in politics. So voting is, is to me, a, a type, top priority in order to make a change. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that we talked about this a little bit, too, is... Um, which is a hot button thing for me is the, is the mental illness um, and, and just, you know, uh, and I'm not using the right term for that. I mean, there's, there's mental that illness helps. and then there's someone that, like my mother, who was suffering, f suffering from dementia. Mm -hmm. um, mental health on a whole. Yeah, just mental yeah. health on a whole is probably the better way to put that. Mm -hmm. um, just, just, you know, hopefully you guys can sort of all agree on that and we get a facility um, that, that, that is staffed correctly and that can, um, that can help us with that. Um, any, any, any thoughts on, on like, uh, gun control, crime? You know, a lot of people still say to this very day that, you know, we don't make guns here, but guns are here. You know, they're coming in through ships. Uh, you know, you, you can bring a gun here from the States, but, you know, it has to be registered. Maybe some, maybe some slippage there. But, you know, we, have, we still, you know, have, you know, people getting shot from guns that, you know. You know, in the States, you, you know, in the States, you know, every corner's got a 7-Eleven and a gun shop. Well, you see, I have a friend who also owns a gun shop, and we get into these debates all the time because I'm a, you know, uh, he he's he's said, uh, and I've noted, and it's true that we have some strong gun laws. A lot of the the guns that are. 
being utilized are come in illegally mm. you know and that way we have to work with the federal government in securing our borders and making sure that those kind of weaponry isn't coming in and i think that's where the federal government and they they them taking a bigger role and making sure that they um because i always say if you look at a newspaper how often do you see there is a big gun bus but there's always a drug bus yeah when it comes to the airport or but so you know that's my big concern is those illegal weapons that's coming into the territory do we do have a strong gun laws in place right now mm. for for the territory and a whole but a lot of the crime that's taking place is actually from weapons that's illegally smuggled into the territory mm. so if we work with the federal government to really um keep monitor and make sure that those yeah, that borders yeah, are, safe, are yeah. safe yeah that that's to me is the key component in reducing crime okay and, and the weapons that come into the territory. Yeah. And you also talked too about, you read or saw that there's some legislation or money's approved for a forensic lab. And, you know, you think that, I guess, will speed up. I guess right now, if anything forensic has to go to the states and yes. has to come back and that's time. And I guess if it's, if it's done locally, I guess, I guess some things would get solved quicker. Yeah. You, you're able to process the scene yeah. quicker instead of having to wait whatever period of time to ship it off and have them test it and then and send you the results back and okay so that way we keep it hopefully the crime would be solved faster okay with with localized or with a localized forensic lab okay okay um well that's it for me um it's about uh 7 27 um just uh Sort of give us uh, sort of a, sort of a wrap up. Tell us who you are, your number, and why we should vote for you. Okay. Well, I don't have a number yet. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm in the general election. Okay. But my name is Sharianne Francis, and I'm running for the senator at large position in the general election in this upcoming November. And um, the reason I believe you should vote for me is I'm passionate about making a difference in the Virgin Islands. And I promise to do my due diligence and research the issues and make my decisions based off of facts and data and look for the overall betterment of the Virgin Islands. And as although I'm the youngest candidate, I believe that, you know, I... You're the youngest candidate running? For the senator at large position, yes. Okay. I'm the youngest candidate running, but I believe that my passion and my goal and my my background and education wise and both experience to make me a great candidate for this position and I hope that everyone takes a look at my platform to just take my word on it question me about it I'm available on Facebook uh, my phone number is let me make sure I tell you the right number 473-340-473-0236 I'm an open book I want I don't want you to just vote for me just because I said so, but question me. If if I don't know it, I'm going to do my research on it or get um, assistance from people who know more because I'm not going to know everything, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that I do the best for the Virgin Islands. And so if you see that I'm the good candidate, if I'm a good candidate for you, please give me a vote in this. November, Sherry Ann Francis. All right. Sherry Ann Francis is our guest tonight. Thank you so so much for coming on our show and um, enlightening us on uh, how, how you can help improve the Virgin Islands. You know, I know I've been back for like since 2008, almost 10 years now. And I hate to say I don't see much happening, much changing. Uh, so we, we do need we do need some things fixed so that we, we all can, uh, uh, you know, we, you know our children and our children's children have a have a great place to uh, live. Uh, mental illness and mental health in general is very important to me. The roads are even more important. You know, people's cars are getting beat up. A friend of mine just a couple of weeks ago hit a bad pothole here, wrecked their car. She had to go buy a new car. You know, mm -hmm. so that, that you know that's got to be fixed. I mean, people could lose their lives. Uh, and with mental health, I forgot to mention that when in my capacity as a fuel coordinator. 
we did organize a mental health forum where we had members of the private sector and the government entities all at the table those who deals with mental health issues mm. and things like that is what's needed not just in working in silos but all of us getting together mm. to come up with solutions you know to benefit the virgin yeah. islands when you when you meet with these other entities does is what is sort of the tone is everybody sort of in agreement and they, they, you know they yeah we know we need to fix that but you know i mean is everybody or are there are, are there some real opposition to Honestly, they uh, when we had like um, different meetings because we also had one for the Saint uh, uh, Emergency Protocol meeting for Saint John in particular, mm. and we had different entities like police, fire. It was everybody liked it because you usually sometimes they work in their own little corners, mm. but to get them all at the table and see, okay, well, this is my issue with this entity and. What can you do to help, you know, fix that? Mm. You know, when you go to the ta reach to the table, you get a lot accomplished because, you know, this person might not be able to do it or this person might be able to fill in a need that this person, another entity can do. Mm. So I, uh, most of the time when we had these meetings, they've been very productive and people love it and they want to have another one because, you know, because they feel that, you know, is is beneficial it's out and it's not like mm. where you have it with cameras and you just have a, a meeting and you able to brainstorm together okay so i they they're they're open to it they're from, open? from my from my viewpoint okay um, when, from, from when used, yeah when mm. we used to do it for at the saint john administrator's office okay they've been open to to come in together to meet okay you know okay well that's encouraging man i just hope that um Things will change, and uh, sounds like you have a plan, and hopefully, uh, you know, you uh, will get in and, and make change uh, for all of us. Yeah. So our guest tonight is uh, Sherry Ann Francis. She is a center at large. Uh, she's trying to get in uh, this November in, um, for St. John. And uh, did you get everything? Yes, I was. You cover everything. Yes, thank you for <laughs> your campaign managers. Like, yes. make sure you make sure you did you get everything. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> you know, he's 17 years old. Oh, yeah. Your campaign manager. Yeah. Okay. And, and so he's very involved in politics, and and that's and I like to see that. You know, at least I wasn't the own. I wasn't a weird child back then okay. when I was interested in politics. So okay. it's good to see that, you know, young, young people, people involved. So. Yeah. And so. Okay. All right, perfect. Our guest is Sherry Ann Francis. She's running for office um, come November. She's a candidate uh, senator at large for St. John. I want to thank you for coming in the studio tonight and blessing us with your, uh, your plan to help. Wish you uh, the best of luck. And this is the It's Your Perspective talk show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. until... Uh, tonight is a little different. We started at 6. We're getting ready to sign off, and then we're going to sign back on at 8.30 because we have another show uh, lined up uh, for you guys. So on that note, we're out. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys again here shortly. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Allow me to work on me. Still I see I work on me. I was on the grind money. I'm in my Made it out the slums. Now we